a slightly more advanced question that involves the two body system still on a horizontal surface is where one of the forces is applied at an angle. What's important to remember here is that that applied force will have two components, those being the horizontal component of the applied force and the vertical component of the applied force. Now, the steps that we follow for this type of question are still the same. We start by drawing ourselves a free body diagram for each object, where we show that for the 10 kilogram object, there is a force of gravity that is acting downward on this object. Since it is on a surface, there will be a normal force acting upward. We can see that there is a tension force acting to the right and we have been told that there's a coefficient of friction, which means that there's a frictional force acting to the left. Then for the 15 kilogram object, we can then see that there is also a force of gravity going to be acting on this object, that being downward. There's also a normal force as a result of the surface. There's the applied force that is now applied at an angle. And then the two forces acting to the left those being the tension force and, once again, the friction force. We can calculate the normal force for each of these objects because we know that the 10 kilogram object only has the force of gravity acting downward on it, the force of gravity being mass times gravity, therefore 98 newtons, and therefore we can say the normal force is 98 newtons. But what we need to see here is that because the 15 kilogram object has a normal force acting upward on it as well, those two forces must add together to make up our gravitational, excuse me, the normal force where we know that the force of gravity, which is pulling that object downward, must be equal to the vertical component of the applied force plus the normal force, where the force of gravity acting on the 15 kilogram object is 147 newtons, 147. The vertical component of the applied force can be calculated by saying that that is the opposite side of the triangle, so 200 sine of theta, where theta is 25 degrees, and so that vertical component of the applied force is then 84.52 newtons. And we can substitute that in here, 84.52 newtons plus the normal force, and therefore we solve to find that our normal force acting on the 15 kilogram object is then 62.48 newtons upwards. Once we have that normal force, we can calculate the friction force acting on each of these objects. For the 10 kilogram object, that is the coefficient of friction times the normal force. Coefficient for the 10 kilogram object given as 0.3. Normal force we have calculated as 98 and therefore our friction force acting on the 10 kilogram object is 29.4 newtons. We can say the same for the 15 kilogram object coefficient of friction times the normal force, where the coefficient of friction here is 0 0.35, the value given for this object multiplied by our normal force that we calculated 62.48 and that then tells us that the friction force acting on the 15 kilogram object is then 21.87 newtons. Now that we have calculated the unknown force, we can now follow the next step in our two body system where we always write a Newton's second law expression for each object. That second law expression starts with F net is equal to mass times acceleration, where in the case of the 10 kilogram object, the net force is made up of the tension force to the right minus the friction force to the left. And the tension is our unknown. The friction we have calculated as 29.4. Mass given as 10 and the acceleration is unknown. We can then simplify that to write it as tension is equal to 10A plus 29.4. We can do the same. For our 15 kilogram object, again, starting with Newton's second law, F net is equal to M times A, where here we can see that the net force is made up of the horizontal component of the applied force, FAH, minus the tension force acting to the left, minus the friction force acting to the left, equal to the mass times the acceleration. 
The horizontal component of the applied force can be calculated by taking that applied force, and because it is the adjacent side of the triangle, that would be 200 cos of 25, which gives us a value of 181.26 newtons. And so we substitute that in here, 181.26 minus the unknown tension, minus the friction that we calculated, 21.87, is equal to the mass of this object 15 times the acceleration. This can again be simplified to find that T for this object is equal to 159.39 minus 15A. And now we remember that since this is the same rope, these two expressions for tension must be equal to each other. And so we can say therefore 10A plus 29.4 must be equal to 159.39 minus 15a, and that allows us to solve to find the value for the acceleration of the system 5.2 meters per second squared, and that is to the right. We can then calculate the tension value by substituting this value for a into either one of our expressions for tension, and that then gives us a value for tension of 10 times the acceleration of 5.2 plus 29.4. And that then tells us that the tension in this rope is 81.4 newtons. Again, important to remember that since this all builds on itself, the most important calculation here would be for calculating the original normal force. And in order to calculate the normal force acting on this object, we need to realize that the applied force has a vertical component. And that vertical component is going to be acting in the same direction as the normal force, which is why we have in this equation over here shown that the force of gravity must be equal to our applied force plus the normal force. Once we have that normal force, we can then calculate our two friction values and with those friction values, we can then show our net force for each object. Important to note here that in a test or exam, this question would normally be asked separately. So the first question would ask for a free body diagram or two free body diagrams. Then there would be a question asking to calculate the friction acting on one or both of the objects. And then only would you be asked to calculate the tension or acceleration of the system which is this part that we have done over here. So because it is done separately, the questions are marked separately and there would be progressive marking going all the way through.